Welcome or welcome back on Watch Advisor and YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and with me is Gregory Kisling, Head of Product Development of Omega. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. We have been setting up a little kind of a Moonwatch studio in the Omega boutique here in Biel. You see Moonwatch, hashtag Moonwatch. And the purpose we have been doing this is because uh, together with Gregory, I want to run you through the history of the 321, the famous movement, hand-wound chronograph movement, and where it started and how development was after the 321 was introduced at Omega, different uh, executions and also in technology things changed with the movement. And then we come back to the legendary 321 that has been reintroduced this year, or to be precise, last year. The last year, yes. It was last exactly. year already. We started yeah. the production with a, with a platinum watch, which is based on the moon watch, the ST105012. This will be another video, by the way. Yes. Henry. So if you're watching this video and you are keen to know more about that wonderful platinum version with its onyx style and with the That's right. Metro moon, moon meteorite yeah. styles. This is another video, so please look for the video. This is only about the 321 movement. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. And in case you're doing this for the first time, you have the chance to win one of the Bose noise cancelling headsets each month. We're giving away one of them. Take your opportunity and win the Bose noise cancelling headsets. We'll start, Gregory, I think, with um, the thought that what happened? The Omega in 1957 presented a chronograph, a, a sports watch with the purpose addressing it to a new, what kind of uh, type uh, did Omega had in mind, a sporty guy or...? It, it, was, a, it was not for, for an astronaut, not at all. No, no. <laughs> no the, the, the year uh, 1957 is definitely a, an iconic year for, for Omega and uh, it was the, the born of the Speedmaster and the first generation, uh, which is named the CK2915, was actually born not alone, but uh, the trilogy trilogy was actually born in 1957. So the the, the three the three sisters, the Rain Master, uh, the Speed Master, and and uh, the Sea Master 300, and uh, and the the first Speed Master, the CK 2915, uh, was actually equipped with a legendary 321 caliber. But this was not and a movement that Omega manufactured. It was a movement coming from Lemania in the Valais de Joux. Correct. And if we want to talk about the 3 to 1, uh, we have to go back to 1941, uh, because the, the 3 to 1 is actually based on the Lemania 27 Crow C12, 27, which means 27 millimeters. It's exactly 12 lines. Mm -hmm. Crow for chronograph and C12, that's for the counter at 6 o'clock, uh, counting up to 12 hours, yes. Uh, and this movement was launched uh, in 1941 and the first one, and the 3 to 1 is actually uh, an evolution of uh, the 27 Crow C12 and was introduced for the first time at Omega, not for the Speedmaster, but for a chronograph, a very nice classical chronograph in 1949. Mm. And then when you decided, Omega decided to bring those three sport watches, including a chronograph, it was again then you decided, or Omega decided to use the 321 again um, in that chronograph. The, the, the idea of the trilogy was to, to develop not only sport watches, but uh, watches for professional professional use uh, for the Speedmaster was actually designed for uh, the racing car drivers. Uh, the Railmaster was more for the, for the scientists, uh, close to strong magnetic field, and the Seamaster for divers. But in terms of design, I think it's interesting to see that the, the very first generation uh, was actually a breakthrough in terms of design because it was the first chronograph watch having the tachymeter outside the dial. Uh, the idea was really to in increase the readability of the time mm -hmm. and the function. It was definitely, in terms of design, a, 
a strong milestone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it also had those uh, legendary broad arrow hands that you redid years after in an own uh, special edition. Exactly. And you can really see uh, regarding the design evolution. In 1962 came out the, the second generation of the Spin Master. And you can already see a difference regarding the bezel. Uh, we decided to introduce a black bezel again to increase the readability of, uh, of the chronograph. The, the shape of the hands uh, were also uh, changed. And 1962 is also very important uh, for the chronicle of Omega. It was actually the first Omega in space, uh, thanks mm -hmm. to the astronaut uh, Walter Schirr. But all these movements equipped with the 321? All equipped with, uh, with the 321. Uh, you have also to know that there, there are different versions of the 321. The first Pitmaster had the, the first generation of the 321, but if we talk about the, the moon period of Omega, uh, we have to talk about the second generation of the 321, mm -hmm. uh, because this generation uh, was actually produced from 1964 to 1968. So the moon watch and also the, the Speedmaster, which was tested by NASA and certified by NASA, uh, were equipped with uh, the second generation of the 321. What are the differences? Uh, very, very tiny differences. Uh, it's about uh, the, the index and it's also about uh, the, the design of the, the clutch bridge and uh, that's it. Was this an evolution Omega did by its own or was this something Le Mania did for Omega or was this already done? No, uh, the, the, there was a great collaboration between Omega and, uh, and the Le Mania, so it was always an input. Evolving and exactly getting coming from, okay. from Omega. Okay, so the 321 was produced, as I said before, until 1968. But in 1968 came out the, the let's say, the Mark II of the 321 mark meaning an evolution and this movement was named 861 which has a completely different conception of course it's it's still a chronograph but the idea was to industrialize uh, this chronograph and that's why we decided to change from a column wheel to a cam system to, to increase also uh, <laughs> the, the production capacity <laughs> People always ask why does a chronograph has a cam system instead of a column wheel? Easy to answer. Column wheel is difficult to manufacture, mm -hmm. needs a lot of adjustments, manually done adjustments. Correct. And if you go to a more industrialized movement, bigger quantities, with a cam system you are easy. Correct. You're easy. Correct. Uh, the other big change between the 321 and the 861 is, is also the, the frequency. Uh, mm. we, we also increase the frequency from 2.5 Hz to 3 Hz. Uh, 18,000 to 21,600. Correct, correct. Uh, also to be uh, more accurate when you do timekeeping. But the watch worn on the moon from the astronauts was the 321, Absolutely. 18,000. Uh, Correct. The traditional, traditional old chronograph yeah. frequency, second, big block. Second generation. generation. Yes. Second generation. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because doubts, you know, you hear people say, no, no, they wore the other one. No, it was the 321 that was one. That's okay. why this movement is iconic. Yeah. 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 Became iconic. It became iconic. Yeah. Absolutely. In I, I doubt anyone. I, I doubt anyone when they introduced those three watches no. thought about the way that the that the Speedmaster would any anytime go on the moon. They would say, okay, it's nice for maybe Steve McQueen driving with it or something. <laughs> no, 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 okay. No, the the Speedmaster was uh, was selected and certified by NASA in 1965. Huh? Mm -hmm. So uh, a couple of years later. Couple, huh? couple of years later, okay. and. Uh, they, they, they wanted definitely to, to have a, a backup for, for the astronaut and uh, we know all the story about Yeah, the, the testing and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yes. We don't name the brands who didn't pass the tests. <laughs> no, we don't. No, look on the look on the internet, Google it, you will find it anyhow. <laughs> okay. 861 started, as we said, with cam cams instead of cam a column system, wheel. Yes. And then yeah. of course in the row here we have uh, the next yeah. generations. Exactly, we, we jump into the next generation uh, with a calibre 1861, so you can see the, the link for naming our calibre, still four digits today. And uh, the, we moved uh, the generation in uh, 1997, uh, uh, which is still the, the, the Moonwatch of today. Uh, the, the fifth generation is still equipped with the 1861. Actually, we have to talk about two versions. Uh, the, the, let's say the basic version, uh, which is the 1861, without any specific finishing on, on the bridges. And you can also see that um, the, the cam is made uh, in polymer, which is a Delrin uh, material. And uh, we produce also the 1863, which is actually the luxury, let's call luxury version of the 1861 with uh, Geneva waves uh, finish on, on, on the bridges and uh, a steel, uh, steel cam system instead of the, the Dela. And in 1999, uh, we decided to launch a, a small complication on the movement because we have a lot of space. If I turn the movement here, I can see that I have a lot of space at 12 o'clock, so we decided to introduce the, the moon phase indicator. So this was then the moon watch with a moon face exactly. indication. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. But the principal difference in between um, the six one and the six three is simply a nicer finishing. Correct. Correct. Technical, identical. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And uh, also uh, the the difference between the eighteen sixty one and the eight sixty one is actually not. Uh, conception difference, but it's a it's a plating difference. So we decided to stop the let's call the red copper uh, galvanic treatment mm -hmm. for the rhodium plating treatment. It, it was for more stability, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and that's why the the collector they, they still love the, this rhodium plated. Mm -hmm. uh, not uh, the and the color will will be interesting because we come back to the color very soon when we come back to the exactly. And, and, and that's why we yeah. when we started reproducing manufacturing movement uh, uh, in uh, 2007, we came back with a not plated but a solid gold rotor and balance bridge okay. to. To recall this uh, rose gold uh, plating movement, which was uh, definitely a signature of our manufacturing movements. And then all of a sudden, uh, we see a brand new just coming out of the of the production 321. Yes. Now we have to link back <laughs> to the old 321. Yes. And um, I think this is a, a huge story uh, to tell. Um, you decided at a certain point that you wanted to launch a Speedmaster equipped with the 321 mm -hmm. as it was. Yeah, I and had it on my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone thinking about such, an, uh, such a technical uh, challenge would say, okay, let's go back to Le Mania, pick the plans, uh, take the, uh, pick the technical drawings, look, uh, let's, let's take everything out, uh, computerize everything and uh, start producing. But there were some Issues. Issues. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, uh, you, you have to imagine, uh, we, uh, the production was stopped uh, more than 50 years. Huh? Uh, we, we didn't reproduce the 3 to 1 caliber uh, during 50 years. So when we decided to reproduce the 3 to 1, it was, uh, it was a huge project and a different project. And uh, we, we decided to create a dedicated team of uh, historian, expert, watchmaker uh, and developer, a small team and we even use a, a specific name <laughs> for naming this team, Alaska Project, you know, Alaska 11 to be, to be accurate and uh, it took roughly two years uh, to, to make uh, this uh, intensive research but also to industrialize with the quality standard of today and uh, um, redoing and reproducing this movement uh, was quite challenging because we had to to put in, in a kind of melting pot different inputs. 
Uh, we made some uh, reverse engineering of the, the th original 321. We decided to take the second generation because we wanted to be part of the moon period of, uh, of Omega. Oh, loyal to the fact to exactly. reproduce the movement that was on the moon. Exactly. So yeah. not the first generation, but the second generation of yeah. the 321. And for us, it, it was evident to, 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 to take a, a reference uh, because you, you, you can if you take different movement, different original movement, you can see some difference uh, regarding the shape of the bridge because the production process was different 50 years ago than today. And we had to take a, a reference. Of course, we had the original drawings from Le Mania, but they were not so accurate as today. And we had to redo the reconstruction of the movement in 3D in order to machine all the pieces and so on. So reproducing this 3 to 1 was a mix of original drawings from Le Mania, reverse engineering of few three to original 3 to 1 second generation, but for the reference, we took the, the watch of Jin Serna. Because we, do, we, we had the watch of Jin Serna. Okay, the, the original watch that Jin Serna wore on the moon. Exactly, Apollo 17. So, okay, it, the watch is in, a, in the museum. Correct. We have pictures of it. Yes. And what you did then is quite amazing. You did a, a computer tomography yes. of that movement. So no chance, no chance to disassemble this watch. Too no. precious, too precious. <laughs> and uh, maybe, yeah, you, you can open the case back, but not more. <laughs> so we decided to use uh, the, the tomography, which is a, a digital scanning method mm -hmm. uh, so you really see inside the movement mm -hmm. and it's a it's a x-ray machine mm -hmm. and then you can recuperate uh, the, the 3d files and uh, this was very important to replicate as close as possible uh, the exact shape of, of the bridges the engraving these little details we, we had to take a, a reference and the Jensen watch was, was the perfect one I mean uh, he, he wore that watch during the Apollo 17 mission. Uh, it was the last man on the moon, and uh, this watch has so much emotion. Yes. And uh, it was actually not the ST105 or 12, which is the, the moon watch in terms of design with the asymmetric case. It was actually his, his training watch. It was the ST105 003, but still with the same movement, with the same caliber. The three to one second generation. Great. So everybody buying now either the steel or the platinum version then will really get a, 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 a one one hundred percent equal yes movement yes done by modern uh, methods correct with the standards of Omega of today yes in all kind so yeah. no cheating nothing really perfect yeah. but the movement really is the movement that was on the move. Absolutely. So you have kind of a clone of the movement that was on the moon. It's a clone, but with the production uh, tools of, of today. Yeah. Uh, but there is a little difference in, in, in terms of design. If you compare uh, the original 3 to 1 and the new 3 to 1, if you have good eyes, you, you will recognize a, a slight difference. The difference is, in fact, the, the treatment, the coating we applied on, on the bridges and the main plate. As I said before, uh, in the past we use a kind of uh, copper galvanic treatment mm -hmm. for uh, doing this rose hue to, uh, to the movement. But here with the new 3 to 1 caliber, we decided to, to change with a PVD treatment. Uh, it's a physical vapor deposition and uh, we use uh, the uh, Sedna Gold target. So. The bridges are still in, in brass or measure, but the coating is made with a Sedna Gold uh, PVD uh, layer. And uh, there's one exception. There's one exception. <laughs> correct. The the clutch bridge. The clutch bridge. <laughs> <laughs> the clutch bridge. And measure is German silver. German silver. Yes. Absolutely. So measure is Francais. It's Francais measure. But in in uh, in in, Ger in in German is uh, uh, is silver and it's German silver. So. Um, the one little bridge, why does this uh, hint uh, stay, why does this little hint uh, 
I, I don't have the 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 answer because I already asked uh, the, this question and uh, we guessed that it, it was a question of friction. So that's why no need to do a, a treatment on, on this uh, little little bridge. Okay. And this will probably in the future also be, I assume, the only part that could uh, change a little bit of uh, surface color. Mm -hmm. Because it's untreated German yeah. silver. Exactly. It, it potentially has the chance that it could. Absolutely, yes. There's no s s protection coating yeah. on, on, on the German silver bridge. So this so is then that little individual um, part in your watch uh, that could... Uh, change yes so exactly if you then compare in uh, 50 years your 321s correct you can say oh mine is uh, yes correct yes <laughs> <laughs> amazing so, so you, you get real history yeah you get omega quality um, you get uh, an entire team called Alaska what was it Alaska 11 Alaska 11 <laughs> doing the whole project they uh, tomogra they make a computer tomography of Gene Cernan's watch yes um, that's I don't know, it's a 200% of emotions. <laughs> I have goosebumps. <laughs> it's crazy. It's really crazy. You have to do this. Yeah. Wow. We, we also develop a, a special 3 to 1 atelier workshop for, for producing uh, this, uh, this caliber, uh, which means that we, we do the, the T1, which is actually the, the, the assembly of the movement. But it's not a, only a question of uh, doing the assembly, the, the watchmaker. Uh, it needs also to uh, to do the, the the fine tuning and the setting for a lot of components uh, because yeah, yeah. this movement was not really an, an industrialized movement, yeah. which means that the um, it needs it needs the, also the resetting of the heart, uh, all, and, the, all and, the forces and, and, the, and the hammer and, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and for example the the handshake, it has really to do the handshake of every turning components. Yeah. And that's why it takes uh, two days just for doing the I assembly. imagine the, it is assembled twice, I imagine. Yes. Yeah. yeah. En blanc. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Of course. Exactly. Once so, for the functionality. Exactly. So it starts with a, with a basic function and then the chronograph function yeah. and then disassembly, uh, yeah. washing and uh, at the end okay. oiling. Yes. And, and what, what, what Gregory said, that handshake means that you, you have hundreds of components that little nose taking the information from the column wheel is it on a column or in between a column mm -hmm. then activating the chronograph all these handshakes have to be tested if they are really doing what they're supposed to do yeah yeah so it's really uh, step by step mm -hmm. putting one component of the other escapement making is also a, a a difficult task for, for the watchmaker because it's uh, he has to slide the, the, the pallet stone a few micrometers. He had also to uh, recalibre the, the Brugge curve spiral. It's yeah. not of Good course to a talk silicon. About. Yes, very difficult. Good to talk. Uh, the 321 features, of course, not a flat uh, hairspring, but a Brugge end curb Correct. as it was in the 321 in, exactly. the, in the days. Exactly. Yes. So it really is a high, uh, let's say it's high mech. It's really traditional. Yeah. It's, 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 in, in car making, we would say it's a big block. Mm -hmm. It's a good old big block. Balance wheel as well. Yeah, with big a, balance wheel. With loaded screws and yeah. time washers. Wow. Yes, a, a lot and, of setting. And in terms of accuracy, um, is it uh, the same uh, tolerances as in the, in the days? It's, it it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky question. Uh, of course, this caliber has not the tolerances as today with a new movement, of course, because the conception remains the same. Uh, the frequency is still the same with two and a half, but the reliability uh, is better. So the stability of, of the rate will be better, but the range is still the same, which means for this caliber minus one plus 11 seconds a day, but we test the, the three to one caliber in five position, which was which was, which was not the case uh, in the in the past with only three positions. So mm -hmm. better stability, but the tolerances uh, are, are are the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. So minus one plus, plus 11. eleven. So always in the, in in this range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. L like the Moonwatch caliber of today, uh, the eighteen sixty one, still the same. Yeah, mine is running perfectly, by the way. So. Very good. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Very cool story, I have to say. Um, 
I imagine that the quantities since you established an own uh, workshop here at the headquarters, there is it's not a mass production. No, absolutely <laughs> not a mass production. You can imagine, uh, it's uh, only one movement every two days per uh, watchmaker. Per, per watchmaker. Uh, the, the watchmaker does uh, not only the, the assembly of the movement, but also of the watch head. So it takes one more day. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the moment, we have a production capacity of roughly 1,000 watches a year, 1,000. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the workshop uh, has uh, eight, wa eight watchmakers. And, and you share the capacity with the steel watch and the platinum watch? Yes, so not equal. <laughs> no, 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 I imagine. <laughs> Hope for you who, who are waiting for a steel version. And uh, there will also be a video about the steel watch later. Question. The steel watch and I, 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 it, I, I shouldn't ask the question, but to be sure, because uh, the steel watch and the platinum watch do get exactly the same movement. Same movement, okay. same specification. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's one movement and two, same engine. two housings. Exactly. Okay, exactly. good. No, because some... Uh, you, People who know Omega and uh, your, the way you do the movements is always when you have um, precious metals, yeah. you tend to give them some extra treatment. Yeah, exactly, like the gold rotor or balance wish. But uh, in this case, the well, movement is so precious, so there's no difference. It would be interesting now um, to ask NASA, maybe there's someone from NASA looking, <laughs> you never know, and they should test uh, the movement and the watch. <laughs> Let it run through the entire test procedure again and to check uh, if uh, the movement uh, and the watch, the steel watch, would again pass the tests would be interesting. 11 tests. 11 tests? Yeah, yeah. 11 tests. And tough ones. Yeah, tough one, yes, yeah. absolutely. Mostly the shocks. Shock, were, vibration, uh, low, uh, high yeah. temperatures, acoustic yeah. noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they wanted to be sure. Very good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. A uh, very interesting presentation um, with lots of details. Uh, let's say um, um, really something um, you have to digest. But when you buy one of those watches, you really get history and quality. Absolutely. Alaska 11. Alaska 11. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Comments, very welcome as always. Questions, of course. If they are too heavy for me, I'll pass them to Gregory and I will get the answers. But you are open and thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.